Specific veggies play a much stronger role in fat loss than you might think, okay? It all comes down to the prebiotic nature of specific fruits and veggies. So this isn't the typical prebiotic versus probiotic video. There are probably thousands of those on YouTube. I promise I'm gonna give you practical applications. I'm gonna give you the prebiotics that you should be consuming, but I'm also gonna give you the timing and the breakdown and why this works in a very unique way, specifically if you're traveling or if you're focused on fat loss and improving your metabolism. So hey, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos peppered in throughout the week as well. Also, make sure you hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications to know whenever I post a new video or go live. All right, so before I get into the really cool stuff and which prebiotic foods you should be eating, et cetera, et cetera, let me give you a really quick breakdown of prebiotics versus probiotics because it's important that you know that. Prebiotics are the non-digestible component of specific fruits and veggies, okay? And what happens is they don't break down in the small intestine, they go into the colon and they ferment. And this fermentation process produces specific kinds of bacteria, but it also produces butyric acid, which feeds bacteria. Okay, so what we're trying to do is feed the existing bacteria. Probiotics, on the other hand, are bacteria that already exist so we're talking about kombucha, we're talking about kefir, cottage cheese, yogurt, probiotic pills, things like that. Those are bacteria that are already alive and then we consume them. Now, the difficult part is the fragility of probiotics. Okay, approximately 90% of the bacteria that's in a given probiotic food or supplement is dead by the time it goes into your mouth. Okay, that doesn't mean that probiotics are bad. Probiotics are still helpful but a lot more emphasis needs to be placed on prebiotics because that's what grows the existing bacteria, which allows us to actually feel better and even burn fat. And I'm gonna get to that in just a second. You see, balance is really key with probiotics and prebiotics. If you're gonna take some probiotics, you need to balance it with prebiotics. So basically, you're taking in the seed and then you're fertilizing and watering the seed so it actually grows. Okay, but let's take this one step further. Let's take a look at traveling. Let's take a look at circadian rhythm and all that stuff for a second. You see, what's really wild is studies are showing that we actually have cycles of given bacteria within our bodies. What I mean by that is that we have periods throughout the course of the day where certain bacteria are very elevated and periods of the day where they're super low, where we just don't have that same bacteria. We have these fluctuations. Now, the thing is, they're usually responding to cues. Okay, bacteria doesn't have any way of really knowing if it's night or day. It can't sense light. So they're leaning on us for cues. So the bacteria in our bodies sense that we get up, we start moving around, or they sense that we start eating, or they sense that we sit down and go to sleep. Okay, so they're picking up on these cues and that's what triggers them to do certain things. So very, very intelligent life forms inside our bodies that are noticing we're awake. So it's gonna skyrocket certain ones up. So here's what's wild. There was a study that took a look at mice. Okay, now full disclaimer, this was done on mice, but it's still very, very practical. They found in these mice that 15% of the species of gut bacteria, which mind you, makes up 60% of the total gut bacteria, because usually it's only a couple of species that make up the bulk of the bacteria. So 60% of the gut bacteria in mice fluctuated throughout the course of the day. Okay, when they were eating, when they were sleeping, et cetera, et cetera. Compare that to mutant mice that had genetic mutations that made it so they had no way of seeing any circadian rhythm and they were flatlined. The mutant mice that didn't have a circadian rhythm and didn't really change anything, they just ate consistently throughout the course of the day and night, ended up having a flatline level of bacteria. They didn't have any surges or falls. Now that sounds good, right? It sounds like you would wanna have this nice even keel, but that's not the case at all. You actually want these surges. Now let's put this into a practical application in humans. In a human, we go to sleep and we want bacteria that's gonna improve that restorative aspect, okay? It's gonna help regeneration, it's gonna help everything, right? Help digest, help just get rid of excess stuff. We want that and those are the things that elevate during our sleep. Then in the daytime, we want the bacteria that's gonna help with digestion, metabolism and growth. We want these cycles, that's what allows our bodies to be, well, dynamic and the bacteria is dynamic too. So where things get really wild though, is when you start looking at what happens when we travel, what happens when we're stressed, et cetera, et cetera. We need to be consuming prebiotic foods periodically throughout the day and sometimes even into the night so we can grow specific kinds of bacteria and have a nice abundance of everything we want. So if you've ever noticed when you're traveling that you feel a little bit off when you land digestively, the reason is actually pretty valid. You see, I always noticed whenever I traveled somewhere, I felt like it was harder to reach my fat loss goals. I always took a stall. And I always attributed it to like dehydration and stuff like that. 
but it actually takes this a little bit further. You see, there was a study that was published in the journal Cell, took a look at travelers that were traveling from the US to Israel, obviously a long flight, going through some time zone changes. When they landed in Israel, they found that their gut bacteria was entirely different from when they took off. Their gut bacteria had higher levels of what is called the firmicutase bacteria. This is a gram-negative bacteria that is associated with obesity. If you took the gut bacteria from an obese person, you would find that more than likely they had high degrees of firmicutase bacteria. So that's really intriguing. Then what they did is they took the bacteria that they extracted from these participants and they gave it to mice. The mice became obese. The mice gained weight. Pretty interesting. The firmicutase bacteria that was associated with travel makes you obese and made these mice obese almost immediately. I mean, it really led to them eating more. Now, what was wild is after two weeks of being home, two weeks of just recovering, these humans' bacteria went back to normal. So what this tells us is that before we travel, we need to be loading up on prebiotics. It's very important that we load up on prebiotics to grow the good non-firmicutes bacteria so that the firmicutes bacteria doesn't envelop that bacteria over the course of a short flight. It gives us a chance to actually let that bacteria thrive and grow so it doesn't get overwhelmed. So now let's go ahead and get into the three different kinds of prebiotics that I would recommend. Okay, first one, asparagus. It's easy to consume, super high in inulin, one of my personal favorites. Okay, inulin has been shown in multiple studies to produce what is called butyric acid, butyrate, and also something known as propionate. So propionate and butyrate end up causing some specific processes in the body that trigger what's called glucagon-like peptide one, so it makes you satiated, but it's also very, very powerful at, of course, growing your gut bacteria. The next one that I wanna talk about is actually an organization that a friend of mine owns that's known as Gutsy. Now, obviously, you know me. I've done a lot of work in the world of bacteria and the gut biome in general. In fact, I was working with UCLA on a particular strain of probiotic that was gonna colonize in the gut. So I'm pretty well versed in this stuff. So I know good people in this industry when I see them. So the interesting thing is, is that Gutsy actually takes a plethora of different prebiotic fibers and puts them into an easy to consume pack. Okay, they've done a lot of research on which prebiotics actually grow the best bacteria and what actually works best in your body. Now, the cool thing is they use a lot of acacia. Now, acacia is very powerful. In fact, the British Journal of Nutrition actually found that acacia outperformed inulin when it came down to the production and the growth of bifidobacteria and lactobacillus. So very, very powerful stuff. And the cool thing is acacia digests slowly. So it ferments a little bit slower, meaning you're not going to have this robust fermentation process that makes you feel bloated like you might get with some prebiotics. So, and since it's already in a simple to consume form, you're not having to actually masticate it and mechanically digest it. So Gutsy is on the forefront of this stuff and they've done a lot of research into the world of prebiotics. So when you're traveling, this is a perfect thing to have with you because it's easy to bring with you, it's easy to get your prebiotics and you don't have to go find a Whole Foods or find a health food store where you're gonna eat some artichokes or asparagus or anything like that. So huge shout out to them. You can find them down in the description below at gutsyorganic.com. Again, that's gutsyorganic.com. Super awesome people, super awesome products. So definitely encourage you to check it out. Now the other prebiotic that's very powerful, and this is really good if you're on a keto diet, is going to be the artichoke. Okay, artichoke of course has a bunch of inulin in it, but it also has something known as cinerin. Cinerin increases bile salt production. When you're on a keto diet and you're consuming a bunch of fats, then yes, you want more bile. So the bile production is a great thing. So the cinerin improves that. Now the interesting thing is that cinerin and inulin have sort of a relationship where they work really well together. So you wanna be having that combination. So artichoke is the perfect fat digestion prebiotic food. So definitely go for that. Of course, combine it with asparagus whenever possible and make sure you combine it with gutsy if you're traveling. So as always, I wanna make sure that you're keeping it locked in here in my videos and that you're constantly engaged. So if you have ideas for future videos, specifically on this topic, make sure you put them down in the comment section below and make sure that you pay Gutsy a visit at gutsyorganic.com because they're a big sponsor of this channel and they've made this video possible so that I can bring amazing content and education to you guys. As always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you in the next video.